What should the England team be to play Ireland at Twickenham next weekend? Can England win and pull off what would be an unlikely upset and knock Ireland off of their quest, which at the minute looks inevitable, to get back-to-back -back grand slams? What is the blueprint that England need to come up with in order to pull that victory off? Those are all questions I'm going to cover on this video, and it's all sparked by the fact that Steve Borthwick has this evening named his squad that's going to be in training together over the coming days ahead of that match against Ireland at Twickenham. And the big news is that Marcus Smith and Alex Mitchell are back. They are both fit and available, with Harry Randall and Max Ajomo going back to their clubs in, uh, now that they're back. Interesting to note as well that Emmanuel Faye Waboso was doing some of his examinations for his medical degree at Exeter University over the last week, so Will Muir was brought in to train in place of him. Faye Waboso is back. But Will Muir stays and it's Tom Pearson that's been told to go back to his club. That seems quite interesting as well. Um, what does that mean for Will Muir? We will see. So that's Steve Borthwick's squad. But as for the team, let's get into the, into the weeds on this England team. OK, and the big news, as I say, Alex Mitchell and Marcus Smith. When Owen Farrell said he was going to step back from international rugby and following a really successful World Cup for him... Uh, in, in Alex Mitchell, you thought these are the two guys that are going to be the orchestrators, the conductors of the England rugby team. And in their hands, it feels like the, the evolution that has been being talked about, the transition, as it keeps being talked about, you feel like it could happen with these guys running the ship. Now they're both available. They haven't played for a while. Will they be selected? It's going to be interesting to see. And let's get into how you beat Ireland. What do you think is the approach? I'll tell you what, I've got a couple of different approaches here. If you just wanted to go pure power, lean into that English DNA of a fearsome pack and just get big men out on the park to try and ruffle some feathers, then this might be your team. You, you bring George Martin back in and have him with Ollie Chesham, cutting him south into the back row and shift Ben Earl to the flank. That, I mean, look at the size of that pack. That's pretty meaty, isn't it? That, that could be an effective way to go. And if you just wanted big, powerful men in the back line, Freddie Stewart comes back in. Daly and Freeman are big units. Two Ilangi through the middle with Lawrence back in the 13 shirt um, around those two conductors in Mitchell and Smith. I mean, that looks... I wouldn't be against this approach for Ireland. I'll get to what my team would be in just a minute. But if that was a way... I think that is a genuine way to go. That might not win, but I think it could... Um, it could be a blunt force that could, at Twickenham, prove itself quite a fearsome challenge. So I'm not against that. If you just wanted to go the other way and you're thinking at the minute, do you know what? Chances are we're not going to beat Ireland. So let's at least just go down swinging. Let's have a crack. Ireland are probably going to score tries because their attack's so good. So we're going to have to score 30 points. So let's pick a team that can score 30 points. If you're going that way, you might have a, a back row where Cunningham South comes in with Underhill and Earl. Um, you, you have Faye Waboso and Dingwall and Freeman and Furbank. You lean on that Northampton Saints connection and you bring those in. Again, I wouldn't be against this either. It's just again, it's always about a, math, a case of trade-offs and it's always a case of what do you want. I think actually this team is one that England fans would probably stomach a defeat with more than any other if you just felt like you were having a go. Look at Wales and how Warren Gatland has played things with his young team. They've had a bit of a cavalier attitude at times, especially when their point's down. And the fans have actually kind of responded to it. And despite being three defeats out of three, the Welsh public seem in a much happier place than the English public do. And England have got two wins. So if I were picking the team, one thing that did, did occur to me, and by the way, if I haven't already, I would love it if I'd earn your subscription on the channel. That would that'd be great. And smash that like button. Just hitting that thumbs up for me helps spread the word. It is just me and I want to re reach as many rugby fans as I can. So thank you very much for doing that as well. And leave your comments down below. What do you think? I was having to think about what what is the England team. If Which, England, which shirts in the England team are nailed on selections right now? Because I was thinking about the team we're going to be playing. When you think of Ireland, at least 10 of their 15. If everyone was fit and available, you could probably go as high as 12 or 13 players that are nailed on you know exactly who's going to be starting that's an amazing place to be and what's more the players that, that aren't in the, aren't nailed on starters they've got some very very handy backups that the team have, have every confidence in when they do come in and play that is a, in massive contrast to England who I think if you had to say who's nailed on to start I, I, I don't think you can go beyond four people I think that's where England are at the minute 
And that's not a great place to be. I've put Ben Earl in italics, by the way, because I think he would definitely be in the team. Not 100% sure whether he'd be wearing seven or eight. So let's go through it shirt by shirt and, and who I would pick for Ireland this weekend. And firstly, I would pick Joe Marler. I think Benno Urbano is a guy that I want to see get a lot more game time in the months ahead. I think he could be the future in the one jersey and, um, and it's time. Joe Marler will be phasing himself out of the England team. I think right now, though, you're up against Ireland and then France. I don't think these two games in the Six Nations are the time to, to stray from what we know has worked. And actually, England's set piece has been good in the Six Nations. Joe Marler's been a big part of that. Um, he's a proven international player. I would keep him in just now alongside skipper uh, Joe Jamie George and Will Stewart. who Actually, as I say, England's set-piece has been decent in the Six Nations, hasn't it? You have to give that element credit. I think what's been quite interesting to see is, and I've mentioned this before, I'm certain this is what's happening. And I think it was all because of the World Cup semi-final when Dan Cole and Joe Marler did such a good job. They are the two best English scrummagers on either side of the scrum. And when they both came off and it was Sinclair and... Gens, wasn't it, came on and England got pumped by South Africa. And when th there was a game in the Six Nations, I forget which game, was it Wales? Dan Cole started, Joe Marler was on the bench. But in the other two games, Joe Marler has started and Dan, Dan Cole has been on the bench. I think that's 100% deliberate and I probably would continue with that as well. So Will Stewart in. I would definitely pick George Martin back. This boy can bang. And when you think about the, the, the workload and the distribution of labour that's been lost with Courtney Laws not being in the England team anymore... We need a defensive captain. We need someone that's just going to go and put in bone-shuddering hits and intimidate the opposition. And the, the best man at doing that in the squad is George Martin. So I would have him in. I don't know whether I'd have George Martin wearing six or five. I don't really mind. But I would probably go with Ollie Chesham. I did consider Chandler Cunningham South in the back row. I've been very impressed with him. But I'm, I'm going with Ollie Chesham. And I am going with Sam Underhill. Uh, I, I, Sam Underhill's come had a little bit of criticism. I think he's class, and I'll just take you back to that World Cup semi-final. I said it in videos before. If Sam Underhill was on the bench for England that night and not Billy Vanapola, England get to a World Cup final. I'm convinced. Sam Underhill's class, and I, I, I kind of like when you've got a guy like Ollie Chesham just hitting rucks and hitting people, I think you can possibly see the best of Sam Underhill and, and Ben Earl. I want to see Sam Underhill put some pressure on the breakdown against Ireland. Alex Mitchell is your scrum half. Marcus Smith, I would pick him straight back in at fly half. I actually think for what it's worth, Steve Borthwick is probably going to pick George Ford again, maybe because Marcus Smith hasn't played in quite a while now. But what the heck, let's just do it. Let's do it. Let's have a go. I actually think George Ford's a wonderful player. I think the service he got last week from Danny Kerr was terrible. And one of the reasons George Ford did not look his best is he was catching the ball above his head every other pass. It was um, not a great day for Danny Kerr and... Uh, but George Ford is 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 amazing. I, I will not be disappointed if he is wearing 10 for England. Uh, but I would just go with Marcus Smith. And I'd also make a change on the left wing as well. Again, Elliot Daly's had a lot of criticism. I think he is a wonderful rugby player. I think he's brilliant. I actually think Elliot Daly's had a very, a decent Six Nations tournament so far as well. But I would pick Emmanuel Faye Waboso. When he was given more than two minutes against Scotland, thank goodness, we saw what he can do. So let's see what he can do starting again. Uh, Ollie Lawrence at 12. Yep. Yeah, I did consider Manu Tuolangi and just having a couple of meatier guys in the midfield. I did also consider, as I was mentioning, Fraser Dingwall at 12. Maybe, t um, or uh, And I considered, outside Ollie Lawrence, Tommy Freeman at 13. All of, those cons all of those are considerations. I don't mind any of them, frankly. I would actually stick with Henry Slade. Again, I think he's an, just an awesome player. He's having a brilliant season. And for whatever reason... A bunch of these England backs did not look like themselves last weekend. I don't know what is going on with the way they're training. I'm he you're hearing some word from some people, and, and Ben Youngs has also mentioned he wonders if they're doing a bit too much defensive work, not enough in attack. I almost think you just need to say to guys like Henry Slade and Marcus Smith and Alex Mitchell, just go out there and express yourself. Go and do what you do, because they're amazing rugby players. So that is where I would go with Tommy Freeman on the wing, who's been excellent. And I would continue with George Furbank as well. Why make the change from Freddie Stewart to George Furbank only to make it straight back again after one match? Whatever it was that was in Steve Borthwick's mind with George Furbank, let's see it. Let's see it. And with Marcus Smith and Alex Mitchell, I think those two could make a real big difference to opening up defences. And in Alex Mitchell's case, his tempo is so good that we could see guys like George Furbank suddenly 
in some space. I think when I look at that 15, it's got a bit of a balance between the power game that I was talking about before with quite an intimidating pack and a back line which has got a bit of spark and a bit of fizz, a little bit of something about it. In terms of the bench, um, I did think about Luke Cowan Dickey. I'd probably stick with with um, Theo Dan. Again, I want to see more time for Benno Urbano. I think maybe the summer tour is, is where you you bring him in and he hopefully by this the Six Nations next year, Benno Urbano should be the starting loose head for England. Cunningham South, Don Brandt. I know that's a bit... I, I would have preferred Pearson to have stayed in the squad and I would have gone for Pearson, but I was thinking Ethan Roots, um, Alex Coles. No. Don Brandt and Kerr. If, if Marcus Smith is... Imagine Marcus Smith still on the pitch, 55, 60 minutes, and you bring on his club mates, eight and nine inside him. Don Brandt Kerr with Smith outside. Now we're talking. And you've got always got George Ford as a as a as a backup, and Elliot Daly is a an amazing player to have with the number twenty three shirt on his back. That would be my selection for Ireland. I would love to know what you think about that, what you would pick, and what you think England's route to victory is. I think if you're going to make the changes, make them primarily in the back line, and pick a meaty, nasty pack up front with big boys coming off the bench as well. And I think I've got that here. I think that's England's best route to victory. They will always be harder to beat at Twickenham than away from home. That gives them a few points leverage against Ireland. There's going to be an onslaught coming from the Irish. They mean business. They will want to go back to Dublin for St. Patrick's Day weekend playing for a Grand Slam. England are trying to spoil their party. Not sure they can do it, but the build-up to that big match at Twickenham starts here. I'll be at the game next weekend, and over the coming days, I'll be bringing you loads of videos on the channel building up to it. So please hit subscribe, leave your comments, give the video a thumbs up. See you on the next one.